Uh, welcome back, everybody, from uh, lunch. Uh, in the previous talk, uh, just before lunch, the Red Hat guys actually queued it up very nicely for me. They basically said that they had, uh, how can we make the installation a lot more smoother and that kind of stuff. So we will talk about this. So uh, in the, uh, many of the, in the mailing lists and that kind of stuff, I've seen a lot of people uh, talk about challenges in trying to uh, deploy or install OVS with DPDK and some of the configuration mistakes that they were making. So the first and the foremost aspect, I just want to have like two different, two takeaways from this talk. One is that, I uh, want to make the OVS installation, OVS DPDK installation a lot more smoother uh, and uh, faster. And the uh, uh, second thing is, uh, uh, how can we make this user experience from a deployment perspective a uh, lot more efficient? And you will see as to why I'm saying that uh, in the next few slides. The first one is that when you try to do a DPDK installation, uh, you have to look at the motherboard spec. And uh, you have to understand as to how many CPUs are there and which CPUs are associated with uh, the different PCI slots in that. And uh, that's one of the things. And the other thing is that selection of NIC. You always have to look at, OK, are they DPDK supported? And you can go look at the dpdk.org slash NICs, and you will be able to uh, find out. Then um, you can rearrange uh, the NICs to the appropriate CPUs and that kind of stuff. And that's extremely important because you can easily have all kinds of uh, performance issues if you don't do it the right way. Uh, the second thing is that this is basically my installation. Uh, I have two CPUs and I have a bunch of PCI uh, 10 gig and 40 gig uh, NICs and that kind of stuff. And I use uh, Ubuntu 17.04 uh, with uh, OVS 2.8.1. Uh, this is a lightning stock, so it's going to be going real fast, but all these slides are available online, so you can go check it out. Check out. Uh, basically, I have only two scripts uh, for the entire installation. You have to first install Ubuntu 17.04, and then you run the uh, step one script, and then the step two script. The reason as to why you need this is that one is before the reboot that really happens. It sets up everything uh, for you, and you have to make some changes into the uh, uh, grub and uh, that's, that's the reason as to why you have those two scripts. And uh, this is the kind of change that you have to make into the ETC default grub. And uh, basically, you have to change the uh, grub command line. Um, and you have to uh, basically enable uh, some of the kernel-related aspects in order to make the DPDK work for you um, when you install the NICs and everything. And of course, you have to run the update grub command and you reboot. The second thing is that when you run the next script, there are a few things that are really happening. Uh, one is that you are basically looking at all the uh, uh, NIC bindings, so you have to look at what kind of uh, um, hardware that you have so that you can load the appropriate uh, DPDK drivers, whether it is IGB, UIO, and so on and so forth. And then you have to make sure that you run the DPDK dev bind utility so that you can actually appropriately uh, bind it. Uh, DPDK works with PCI addresses, and uh, in from 2.8 onwards, you, or I think it's 2.7 itself, I am not 100% sure. You can actually, instead of calling it DPDK PV, P0 or DPDK0 and that kind of stuff, you can actually have different good recognizable names so that you know what Nick you're really talking to and that kind of stuff. Um, then this is how you basically do the binding of the uh, DPDK interfaces. You have to, of course, check the uh, kernel module, uh, whether it's uh, loaded and that kind of stuff. And then uh, there are some uh, user level uh, drivers like VF, VF50 uh, PCI. Um, and uh, this is basically some of the information that I have and how to make all of those things happen. Setting it up is very simple, but you have to make uh, a few things. You have to associate memory, when you ha especially when you have more and more CPUs. You have to make, basically make sure that you have memory for each of the CPU. And then, um, as I talk about in the original interface name, um, there is an aspect of basically that used to be called DPDKP0 and that kind of stuff. Now you can actually have uh, your own numbers. Um, and then uh, this is how it's going to look up. Uh, you're going to see uh, when you do the um, uh, OBS VSETL show. Um, and then one of the challenges is that when you want to make this thing persistent, you have to enable it through ETC, e, DPDK interfaces. But the problem is that when you load them, when you reboot it, it will only load the kernel module and not the user module. So you have to rebuild the entire tree. So the way that I do it is 
I basically go ahead and uh, delete the uh, bridge and then rebuild it using that same step to script. So that's what I have. I have all the instructions and everything uh, online. So feel free to use it and please uh, provide any kind of feedback. Thank you.